coming to paperback and e-readers from SJS Direct, Isis, House of Isis, the goddess next door takes on a hustling hotep high priestess in Harlem in this Afrocentric Isis series adventure. Pre-order Isis, House of Isis on Amazon.com today. One of my viewers who watched my Surviving in New York video wanted me to do a video talking about the Bronx. And this is a video that I can do because I have lived in the Bronx all my life. And I, in those 44 years, I have learned a lot about life and surviving in this borough. And one of the things you need to understand about the Bronx is that it has changed a lot over the years. Now, I was here back in the days when it was called the Burnt Down Bronx, when there were nothing more than abandoned buildings and abandoned lots all around me. And I remember growing up as a kid, living across the street from the Metro North Railroad tracks on Park Avenue, seeing all those burnt out and abandoned buildings, which were the result of the 1970s fiscal crisis when the city decided it wanted to raise property taxes in the hopes of getting revenue and landlords could not afford to do to pay these property taxes due to the state of the city where we had this heroin epidemic going on and most of the working class people deciding they were just going to leave areas like the Bronx. Now the Bronx back then before the heroin epidemic of the late 60s and early 70s was primarily ethnic whites which was Jews, Italians, Polish, Russians and Slavic people and they had a growing black population and in the 70s before um, that era that's what who was primarily the residents of the Bronx because the Bronx was originally a working borough filled with working class people and lower middle class people but as the fiscal crisis of the 70s took shape many of the working class people decided they would take their money and move to the suburbs because they saw the neighborhoods starting to decline and they also started to see their property values starting to decline and when they saw their property values decline due to the fiscal crisis to the point where the taxes on the on their homes was the same as the value of their homes they all decided to pack up and leave and some landlords just decided to burn down their buildings for the insurance money and that's how the Bronx became the burnt down Bronx. Now the Bronx has some great historical um, things like we have Yankee Stadium where the New York Yankees have played ever since their inception. We have the Bronx Zoo and we have um, we are the birthplace of rap and hip-hop and that's also part of the Bronx's history. We also have a place all the way at the top of the hill called the Grand Concourse which is based on the Champs Elysees in France and the Grand Concourse is supposed to be the main thoroughfare that runs through the Bronx from 138th Street all the way up into the 200s and up in Riverdale, not Riverdale, but parts of the Bronx all the way up there so you can take a BX1 or BX2 bus and go from the poorest neighborhood Mott Haven all the way up to the more upscale neighborhoods in Woodlawn so that that that's what you can do here in the South Bronx on one bus ride but primarily the Bronx is a working class borough it is one of the poorest boroughs in the city. It's where a lot of the poor people live because it's a place where mostly working class people go. And another fun fact about the Bronx is that it's the only borough connected to the United States mainland. So out of all the boroughs in New York City, the only borough connected to the United States mainland is the Bronx. And demographically, the Bronx has changed over the last 44 years I've been alive and the demographics have changed from again ethnic whites like Italians, Irish, Polish, Slavic, Russian and Jewish to a black population to a overall majority Hispanic population and that happened during the late 70s and the 80s. Now 
in the 70s and the 80s, we had a growing black population. However, due to the crack epidemic of the late 80s, we had a large population of black people leave during the late 80s and early 90s due to many black people getting educations and then getting jobs and then moving to other areas. Some people became casualties of the crack epidemic, whether they were addicted to crack cocaine and died of crack overdoses, or others wound up being killed in the wars over the turf regarding these abandoned lots and abandoned buildings where people used to sell drugs back in the day because a lot of people they would use these abandoned buildings and abandoned lots and some store owners would use their storefronts to sell crack back in the late 80s and early 90s and that's what led to a lot of other working class people like transit workers, police officers, teachers and other civil servants moving to New Jersey or upstate and out of the borough or Long Island and that's what led to some of them moving and then others just decided to move because they just were tired of the crime and the violence that went on in the Bronx and the Bronx again is a very rough borough to live in don't let anyone fool you this is not a place for greenhorns it's not a place for some young inexperienced person because what will happen to you if you come here inexperienced is people are going to use you people are going to take advantage of you and some people will see you as an easy mark and you will become the victim of a violent crime because a lot there's a lot of rough people around here and it's not a place where you can just be playing around like you can in Manhattan Manhattan is a lot safer than the Bronx and it's it's Manhattan is a lot safer than the Bronx and it's a lot safer than some parts of Brooklyn and Queens but in the Bronx you really have to keep your head on a swivel around here because it is a very rough place to live and when you go to when you're living in the Bronx you have to understand you know how the streets work you have to understand how the bus lines work because you can easily get lost if you don't know where you're going. Now, the Bronx is a very sm is a very small is one of the smaller boroughs, but it is very vast, and there are different neighborhoods, and you have to know which neighborhood is which. Now, I live primarily in the South Bronx, which is the Morrisania area, and the Morrisania area is one of the rougher parts. Now, I remember as a kid, I grew up in a building that was right across the street from Metro North Railroad tracks and that was one of the roughest areas in the Bronx and the Bronx in certain areas was industrial at the time that's another thing people need to know about the Bronx that was very industrial we had a lot of factories here we had a lot of industrial stuff around here and you can see remnants of that when you walk through certain neighborhoods you can see some of the old industrial buildings that were part of this because again this was a working class neighborhood and it was mostly working class families that that you primarily lived here in the Bronx that's primarily who were the residents of the Bronx and here in the Bronx there are certain areas that you can go for shopping there's there was 3rd Avenue um, on 149th Street that's a big shopping district there's Fordham Road and then there's also the Gateway Center, which opened up about eight, nine years ago. And several of these are, they are iffy at best. And 3rd Avenue and 149th Street back in the day was considered the big hub for shopping. And a lot of people used to like going shopping there back in the day, especially when Alexander's was in business. And Alexander's at one time was a big time department store and it was the anchor for the 149th Street area and the Fordham Road area and because it was such a big store you had other businesses coming around the store and it made it a major shopping trip for everyone. It was just a great place to go back in the day especially when we used to have the movie theaters on Fordham Road. Now Fordham Road is another shopping area and it's even a better shopping area than 3rd Avenue but both of these areas have gone into serious decline over the last couple of years ever since Alexander's closed back in 1992 and Fordham Road really went into decline after Sears went out of business and both of those areas they're, they're just not what they used to be it's a pale shadow of itself 
from what it was 30 years ago. 30 years ago, that was an, Fordham Road was amazing, and Third Avenue was amazing. Now the main shopping district right now is the Gateway Center, and the Gateway Center is the place where we have our Target, where we have our Toys R Us, and many of the big chains. But back in the day, the smaller retailers, they were the place to go because of um they used to supplement what Alexander's used to have in their store back in the day and that's where people primarily went and did their shopping in places like third avenue and fordham road back in the day because right after you came out of a <clears throat> place like a alexander's you would go to a place like a young land for toys or action figures or you would go to one of the restaurants there like a mcdonald's or a kfc well it was kentucky fried chicken back then and those were places where people would go and they would have a nice Saturday afternoon. I mean, I remember as a kid, that's what we used to do back in the day. We would go 3rd Avenue, you'd do some shopping, and then at the end of the day, you would go to McDonald's or you'd go to Kentucky Fried Chicken. And that's how you would close, off, close up your day. And with some, that's why we would do it back then. And that was life back in the 80s. But after Alexander's closed in 1992, shopping really fell off really bad in the Bronx. And that's because a lot of retailers just couldn't stay in business without them to help supplement things. And that's what led to things getting really rough in the South Bronx, and that's what led to things becoming really dark in the South Bronx. Now, if you go down 149th Street today, you're going to find a lot of jeans and sneaker stores, a lot of gold stores, a lot of 99 cent stores, and a lot of thrift stores. And the same thing you're going to see on Fordham Road as well. You're not going to see really that much variety until you go to the Gateway Center. Now, when it comes down to entertainment, there are, there is a couple of movie theaters. There's a Whitestone Multiplex all the way on the other side of the Bronx, which is where the Six Train is. There is the Lowe's Multiplex, um, which is in the 161st Street Mall. And then there was a couple of other multiplexes around. But I remember back in the day we had real movie theaters, but a lot of those movie theaters were demolished. But all that was gone from the old heydays of the Bronx. We used to have, you know, we had theaters on Fordham Road. We had a Kent Cinema on 167th Street, but all those theaters, they were, again, all demolished, or they were turned into supermarkets or grocery stores. And that's really was one of the sad things about living in the Bronx, that when you see how much it has changed, it, it just makes you sad because the Bronx used to be something very beautiful at one time and it was a place of great imagination and great creativity now in the 80s one of the great things to come out of the Bronx was rap music and hip-hop music and that came out of the things that were going on at the time because I remember back in those days I was like 11 years old or 10 years old and rap was starting to emerge and it emerged really on the streets and you could see it on the streets you could see people you know, break dancing and stuff, and it came to life right in front of me, and I saw it, you know, emerge from there. Now, a lot of people say it started in the 70s, but that's when I started to see it, you know, come alive back then. I saw it coming alive and emerging as an art form back then, and it was an amazing thing to see. But when it comes down to today's South Bronx, it is a very different place from what it was back in the day. I mean, today's Bronx... Again, it's primarily Hispanic, and again, it's different Hispanic ethnic groups, which are Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, Ecuadorians, Mexicans, um, Guatemalans. It's primarily Hispanic. The borough president is Hispanic, and a lot of the city councilmen are Hispanic. And you see a lot of Hispanic businesses in areas like 170th Street, and even places like Fordham Road and um, other areas like Mount Eden and other places like that. You see a lot of Hispanic businesses <clears throat> and you're recently starting to see more Arab businesses. So it is a, again, working class area. In some places it's a ghetto because you have a lot of poor people here. And a lot of people are on welfare. A lot of people are on Section 8. And a lot of people are lower working class. So that's primarily what makes up a lot of the demographics in the Bronx. And another thing you're going to see regarding the Bronx is that they have a lot of the subway lines. This is where they start to terminate 
here in the Bronx. This is because in the Bronx, is, this is where a lot of the train lines start. And the two train starts here, the five train starts here, the four train, the B and the D, they all start in the Bronx. And they usually are very tight to get in when you're trying to get on the trains these days. Back in the day, it wasn't really like that, but today it's like that. And the other thing you have to understand about the Bronx is that the buses are, it's best if you avoid them because the buses, they have a lot of drama going on them. They have a lot of junkies on them. And a lot of the junkies, what they do is they cause a lot of drama on certain bus lines like the Bronx 15, Bronx 1 and the 2. You can get on a bus with one of them, and it can be a nightmare of a ride. Also, you have to deal with a lot of single mothers and your kids, so it's best to avoid the buses if you can. If you can get an Uber or you can get a cab and you can afford that, better to get that than to take the bus. And if you have to take the train, again, best for you to take the back car rather than the front cars because they get really packed very easily early in the mornings and even in the afternoons these days. Buses are usually jam-packed from morning to night, and that's just how it is here in the Bronx. But it, and also, if you want to know about the businesses, yeah, there's something you need to know about. There's a lot of Arab grocery stores, Korean supermarkets, a lot of the, and a lot of smaller supermarkets, and the prices there are a little better than Manhattan. A lot of a little bit cheaper. You can get stuff 20, 25 percent cheaper than you would in Manhattan. But things, I hope, stay that way for a while. But we have this influx of hipsters coming in. And what they're doing is they're driving up the rents here in the Bronx. Because the Bronx was one of the cheapest places because it was one of the poorest places. But you have all, some of these hipsters trying to come in. And they're trying to bring things up. Unfortunately, what I'm seeing is, is that they come in for a couple of months, see how rough this place is, and then they wind up leaving because... What happens is, it's really rough here, and if you if you don't have any real survival skills, you're not going to really make it in a place like the South Bronx or the Bronx overall, because, again, it's a working class area, it's filled with really rough people, and it's not meant for greenhorns. And these hipsters, they come in with these big ideas, and they think they can make it like Brooklyn, but it's not a place like that. And that's why they usually wind up leaving in a couple of months or a year or two, because here you really have to have your head on a swivel or else somebody's going to jack you up and this is what usually happens to these guys they usually wind up thinking they can come here and thinking it's going to be a certain way they can try to gentrify it but usually what happens is they wind up falling completely apart and I've seen this happen in places sadly like the new 161st Street Mall they tried to build what happened was they tried to bring a wall bounds supermarket to that part of the Bronx, which was not too far from Yankee Stadium. And what happened was the place kept getting robbed because they had an HRA office and a lot of junkies hung around the HRA office. And they also hung out at the courthouse, which was where they had criminal court right across the street from this mall. And it did damage to the wall bounds business. And they had to wind up leaving and we wound up stuck with a food bazaar. And many of the other businesses wound up that started there wound up leaving for the same reason because you had a lot of junkies hanging out in that mall, and people just could not go there because in between the HRA office, the Social Security office, and the criminal court, it made it to be a very rough neighborhood. Now, a lot of people who go to the who are in the Bronx know how rough it is, and most people who are in the 161st Street area, they know how rough it is. And the only time you really start to see a lot of people. In the 161st Street area is when they have these Yankee games. Now, during the summertime and the fall when the Yankees are playing, you'll see a lot of white people come to the Bronx, but they will all get off at 161st Street, go to their game, and then go back home. They will not stay in the neighborhood or hang out in the neighborhood because they know the neighborhood is really rough, and with the criminal court and the other courts being around there, it's not a really a safe place to be because you have a lot of defendants who are junkies, and you have a lot of other assorted criminals in the area, in the HRA office and the Social Security office, so they don't want to be in that area for so long. So you'll see a lot of white people only when the Yankees are playing in the Bronx. They only come for the New York Yankees games. If there's no Yankee games, you're going to see primarily Hispanic people and a few black people. It used to be you saw more black people in the Bronx back in the day, 
but again, a lot of the black people moved due to the crack epidemic, and then some died, and others got their educations and got their jobs. But overall, if you come to the Bronx, again, you, this is one of the toughest boroughs in the five boroughs. It is one of the roughest places to live, and the job market in the Bronx is one of the worst in the overall area. This is not a lot of a place where there are that many jobs, and the few that are here pay very low wages. So this is a really heavy, lower working class place. It's a place where people they who live here, they're just trying to move up to another level, or they're trying to work towards moving to a higher level. They're not really a lot of people really aren't established like they are in Manhattan and Brooklyn and Queens. A lot of people in Manhattan, Brooklyn and Queens and Staten Island, they're more established, but a lot of the people here in the Bronx are poor and working class. And I'd say that the average salaries um, manage between twenty five and thirty thousand dollars and a lot of other people they are living with some sort of supplemental income like Section Eight, food stamps, WIC or some other government program to help supplement their economic needs because this is again an area where a lot of people just don't make that type of money so people this is how they live and usually most of the Bronx supermarkets they're busiest on the first of the month and that's usually when they're primarily busy but for the rest of the month everything is usually slow same thing with the post office here it's usually busy on the first of the month because everybody's cashing checks or taking out money orders to pay bills but for the rest of the month it's just a ghost town because again most working class people don't have that much money except for every two weeks and a good chunk of the people who live in the Bronx only get money once a month so it's a very poor place to live and the rents while they are a little bit lower than the rest of New York City it's, it, in proportion to what you have to deal with, it's a lot you have to deal with. So living in the Bronx, not something for amateurs, not something for greenhorns. And it's a place where you have to have really strong survival skills if you want to live here. Because if you do not know how to survive, you will not really make it in this part of New York City. If you'd like to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box. And if you want to try some of my SJS Direct publications, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.